Hey, John Morris here with Wishlist Products. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to connect to the Wishlist member API and access data from that API. Now, there are really three different ways that you can do that, and each one depends on the scenario that you find yourself in. So, given a different scenario, you'll find that there's a recommended or a best way to connect to the Wishlist member API and get data from it. So we're going to cover each three of those ways and what those scenarios might be. Just to give you a little bit of an idea of the setup here so you know what we're working with. In this particular file here, I have a couple files. The first one is actually a plugin file. So it's demo plugin.php. And this is actually inside of a plugin that I've created that's activated on this WordPress site and running so that we can use the functions and things inside of this for our demo. So I've created a couple functions. You'll see uh, this DP API demos internal and DP, DP API demos external to show two different scenarios. And I've created short codes for each one. So I have a DP API demos internal short code, which calls this function and a DP API demos external function, which calls this external function here. Okay. So that's, that's really the setup. And then I guess if we come over here, to this post, you'll see that I have the short code set up in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this up to internal because that's the first thing we're gonna demo. So I have this set short code set up here into a page and that page is this hello world page that we're gonna have right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the code and we can get an idea of how this works. So the first scenario that you would find yourself in or might find yourself in is that you are working within say a plugin or a theme of a wishlist member site or a site that has wishlist member installed on it and you want to access data in your code from that site okay so we call that an, an internal request because you're working within the same site that you're requesting data from so when you make an internal request the best way to handle that is to use what are called the built-in helper functions that we now have in Wishlist Member. So I'm gonna show you where these files are. So if I go over to my projects folder, if you go into the Wishlist Member, and then you go into the core folder, you go into API Helper, you're gonna notice uh, three files. In your install, you'll have three different files. So one of them is the functions.php, and that's the internal functions that we're talking about. Now we're gonna talk about the class API methods, which uh, has a few more things to it and you can use externally. And then we're also gonna talk about the WLM API class on the scenario in which you would use the functions in that particular, or the methods in that particular file. Okay, so that's where these files are. Right now we're talking about the functions.php file. So if I click over to that file, you can see this is really a file that has a bunch of different built-in functions that you can call from directly inside of WordPress to access different parts of Wishlist Member. So you can get levels, uh, you can add levels, you can delete levels, you can uh, get how the members for a particular level, you can uh, get members, you can update members, so on and so forth. There's a whole bunch of different things that you can do in with these built-in functions. In fact, everything that you can that's available to do from the Wishlist Member API is also available inside of these functions. So if you've worked with the API in the past and you're familiar with what you can and can't do, you can do all those same things, but now instead of having to include the WLM API class, connect to the API, authenticate, do all of that stuff, you can now just call functions from directly inside of WordPress. Now this is probably gonna be the largest use case. Uh, this is probably what you'll do the most is making internal calls and so you would use these particular functions. So if we go back over to our demo plugin, then you can see that all I'm doing here is I'm running a checks to see if that function exists. That's important for now since um, this, these functions were just added in the, the latest version of Wishlist Member. So if someone's ro running an old install, they may not have these functions available. So what you would wanna do is check to see if that function exists and if it does, then you would simply call that function. And if not, you could either do something where you send a message to the admin asking them to update their wishlist member, or you could use the WM API class 
and you could write all, all that code out yourself and so on and so forth. Of course, as we go forward, um, that'll become less and less of a concern. But for now, you definitely want to check and make sure they at least exist so you don't break the site if uh, they're running an old version of Wishlist Member. Okay, so check to see if that function exists. If it does, we're going to get... Uh, we're going to call that function to get the levels. So this is just going to get us all of the levels that happen to be created in this particular membership site. And then we're just going to print those out. That's all this function does. And of course, we're using a short code for that. So if we go over to our Hello World post, you can see that that's essentially what we have here. We have an array and it's got all of our level data. I only happen to have one, partic one level that's created for this particular site. Uh, for testing purposes, but you can see it shows us that information. Again, if you were to go through all the steps that you used to go through with the API, this is the exact same output that you would get. So it's, it's returning the exact same data that you get from the API. It's just a lot easier to do now. Okay, so that's the first situation. That's probably the situation where that you're going to use most when you're Connect, you're working with inside a plugin or a theme and you want to get data from the same site that uh, you're, you're working on or that your code is running on okay so again use the you can check out the functions in functions.php and also of course uh, codex.wishlistproducts.com for all the documentation on these functions there the next scenario where you might find yourself in is you're working within a WordPress site but you want to connect to another wishlist member site so one that's not the same one that you're working on for some reason. So maybe you have wishlist member running on some sort of central website and then you, you have like satellite sites that connect to it and can get data from it and can then display certain things to users based off that. Maybe you want to create some setup like that or, or whatever the case may be where you need to connect to an external site from the one that your code is running on. So if you're inside of WordPress, then you can use the WLM API methods class to do that. So if we go back to projects, that is this file right here, class-api-methods.php. And if we open that up, you can see that we have uh, a class here, and this allows us to run a bunch of different methods that we can then connect to uh, an internal or external site. Now the thing to keep in mind about this class is this class is actually the base for the functions.php file. Okay, So all of these functions you'll notice all they do, all we're doing is instantiating um, the WL API methods and then we're calling methods from within it in this functions.php file. The difference between the two is that the functions.php file makes the assumption that you're using this internally. Okay, so uh, it's making that assumption and it's instantiating the class in that way. However, the class can be used to make external requests as well. So if you come over here to our constructor, then you can see that we can pass in the cache time, which there's caching used throughout this class uh, using WordPress transients to cache requests. And it's it's smart, so if you add a level, it's going to reset the cache for, for getting levels and so on and so forth. It's, it's smart caching, but you can set that time. But then you can also pass in the URL and an API key. So when you instantiate this class, you can actually pass in the URL and API key of an external site and connect to that external site and collect data from it. And, this class, and then once you've done that, once you've instantiated this class in the same way, or that way, then you can simply just call the methods from in this class. And again, they're the same methods that we call inside the functions file. You'll just notice that we are, uh, we're just, uh, we're not passing a URL and an API key. So what the class does is it simply uses the site URL and it uses the API key from the local site that this happens to be installed on. Okay, so again, this works for both local and remote, however, if you want to use it for remote, then you would pass in a URL and an API key. So if we come over here to demo plugin, you'll see that in our external request, that's exactly what we're doing. We check to see if the class exists, and then we're instantiating a new class of WL, or new instance of WLM API methods. We're passing in a cache time, and then I have these constants I've defined up above simply because I didn't want to show them here on the screen uh, because they are to an actual site. So uh, I just have those 
constant to find up above, but essentially it's just a URL of the external site I want to connect to and the API key that I want to connect to. Okay, so you pass those in, and now you can see here to get the levels, all I'm doing is calling API get levels. So I'm calling that class, calling the get levels method from that class, and then I'm printing out those levels. And so we use the DP API demos external short code to show that. So again, if you take a look here at what you see, and then we come over here and we change this to external and we update the post, what we're going to get is we're going to actually get uh, the levels from that external site. So if I refresh, you'll notice I have a bunch more levels here. Um, and so we're getting this, this data from the external site, okay? So that's what the external you can can do with the API class. Again, you can use this on your local site too, uh, but mainly for uh, connecting to uh, external sites if you need to do that. So that's the second method. Again, that's if you're connecting to an external site from it within WordPress. The final scenario is if you happen to be connecting to a external site and you're not inside of WordPress because the API methods class, this WLM API methods class, uses WordPress functions inside of it uh, to, you, to do the caching with transients and some other things. So it needs to be inside of WordPress. However, you can still connect to the Wishless Member API outside of uh, WordPress. And that's when you're going to use the WLM API class. So uh, again, if we come over here, WLM API class.php. Now, if you've worked with our API in the past, this is the file that you're familiar with. This is the one that you've been working uh, through. So you may already be familiar with this. If not, I'm going to still go through it. So if we come, come here, you can see that we have this particular class here. It's somewhat similar in that you pass in a URL and an API key, and then it has a number of different methods that you can actually use to uh, access resources. So you can post data, you can get data, you can put data, you can delete data, okay? So you can take a look at this file. Um, in order to show you how this works, I'm gonna come over here to this index.php file. Now I wanna show you where this lives at. This file is actually in a, a demo file or folder under WM API, and it's in this index file right here, okay? So that's the file we're working with. This is completely outside of WordPress, okay? So again, I've created a, a config file that has my API URL and API key so that uh, I can keep those hidden for the, for the demo. You'll see I'm requiring that config file. I'm also requiring WLM API class.php here because we need that file so we can access its methods. And then all I'm doing to start is I'm instantiating a new class of WLM API class. I'm passing in the API URL and the API key, okay? So we instantiate the class. We set the return format. It can be PHP, XML, or JSON. So I want PHP. And then now all I'm doing is accessing a resource. And so I'm using get levels. And I'm just going to get the levels like we've been doing uh, on the other requests. The response when it comes back is serialized, so I want to unserialize that response, and then I'm just going to print out uh, that response. Now, one thing I want to mention here while we're here is what I see a lot of people do is they'll instantiate the class, and they will try to either echo that object or print that out or, or do something with just this API object. And that's not going to work. When you do that, it's going to give you a not authenticated error every time because the way the API is designed to work, uh, you have to get pat, be accessing some sort of resource via uh, some sort of method. So get method, put method, whatever. So you have to be uh, accessing something. So if you just try to print out, if you instantiate the class and just try to print out or print our a the API object, all you're going to get is an error message. Okay, that that doesn't mean you you're not connecting. Uh, it's just the way the, the the API is set up. So what you'd want to do is you want to go ahead and actually run a method. The simplest one to run is just get levels uh, and and then unserialize that response and print that out. And that'll tell you if you're connected to the API or not. Okay. So again, we're just getting the levels. Again, this is from our external site. This is completely outside of WordPress. And so if we go over to that page, then we can refresh this page and you can see that uh, once it reloads here that we're getting 
uh, that same data. Okay. Now uh, it's going to take a minute here. So, but it does load this data. You, I mean, you can see it right here. It it loads that data. Now that brings up a good point. One thing that you'll notice, and why it's recommended that you use the functions.php file if you're working internally, or you, or even use the API methods class if you if you want to. But uh, you'll notice that the requests when they're made internally happen a lot quicker than if they're made externally because external requests are made via HTTP and so that's just a, the request just takes longer whereas internal requests we actually have a, a internal function in which this member that bypasses the HTTP request and just makes that call internally in PHP so if I come to API methods you'll notice if we go to any one of these get levels you're going to see first it checks to see if um, if this site is if we're making internal requests and that's this is established in the constructor so we we figure this out in the instructor for making an internal request so if we're doing that and this function wishes member API request exists this is the internal function that allows us to access the API internally if that exists then we're gonna run the request that way uh, and we'll return that it's only if that these two things aren't true or one of these two things isn't true that we're then going to use and you can see we're, we're actually uh, accessing the API via the WM API class.php file here using HTTP okay so when we use this internal function to access the API it happens a lot quicker because like I said it's just running through PHP instead of having to make an HTTP request okay so as much as possible you want to try to use the internal functions. The thing you don't want to do, or I don't recommend that you do, is use the WM API class methods to access data that's on the same site that your code is running on. So if you're writing a plugin that is designed to access wishes member data from the same site that that plugin is installed in, don't use the WM API class methods. Use either class-api-methods.php or even better use the functions.php file. Okay, because it's going to handle all the hard stuff for you, plus it's going to make those requests internally uh, and make it a lot easier for you. The only time you really want to use this WM API class.php file is if you're making external requests from uh, outside of WordPress. That's about the only time that you want to use this, and that's the scenario here. Okay, so that's how to connect the various ways to connect to and work with the wishlist member API. As you can see, it's very versatile. It's designed to, to work in a myriad of different ways, and that's why it's set up the way that it is set up. Um, and so we've hopefully made it easier for you now to be able to access all of the different data inside your wishlist member installs. So I hope you got something out of it, and I'll talk to you later.